for the ECA trials. And I think I'll take up the questions at the end. Uh, over to you, Tanisha. Right, sir. So I'll be sharing the PPT and then I'll be discussing it along with this. Thank you so much, Ananji. Thank you so much, Kalkalji. I will uh, just begin with um, screen sharing. Uh, Kalkal, sir, in case the screen would not be going ahead, please let me know and I will um, intervene in between. You can see the yeah. PPT now? Yes, yeah, yes. Please, please carry on. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, um, this is what I had presented in the last uh, PPT as well. This is just the starting point of this one so that you are aware as to till what step we have reached and what we'll be taking ahead. As Kalkalji has already mentioned that now is the process from the trial onto the allocation part. So we'll not be touching the parts before that because you've already been apprised of that and that stage is anyway over for all of you. So here you were supposed to apply under the EC admissions. Uh, this time we had opened the same, uh, the availability of the same during the correction window as well. Then you were supposed to upload the five plus certificates out of which the three had to be or will be evaluated now by the dis, uh, respective committees for each of the ECA category and all five in case of NCC and NSS. Uh, please remember and note here that the candidates who do not have the valid certificates, valid means uh, I have been getting a number of questions asking me what does it mean by the valid certificates, the years and the time period between which the certificates had to be uploaded, the three year window period from uh, 21 to 24 has already been provided to you. So valid certificate means this uh, one, num number one, that the certificates during this time period and also as per the different criteria, uh, criteria A, B, C and D that were given in the CSAS brochure. If your certificates are not in that valid uh, format, they will not be considered as valid certificates. So the candidates without valid certificates will not be eligible to give trials. Uh, it is a prerequisite. You, it's not a, it's not a filtering criteria. That is, uh, unlike sports, we do not keep that as a shortlisting mechanism. But then, having these certificates is a mandatory requirement to be eligible for the ECA trials and allocation through the ECA quota. Then uh, yesterday, as you must have seen on the website, coming on to the third step now, we have already uploaded the trial schedule instructions and the venues that have been made available. Now, this is a tentative. Uh, trial uh, schedule, you can say. I would not say the word tentative here because this is anyway going to be the range in which various categories will be holding their trials. But I'm using the word tentative here because they are not yet in the individual, uh, you can say, for uh, roll number wise or form wise or CUAT registration number wise. The data has been sent to us yesterday and accordingly now we will be putting up, I will be, we will, uh, in the ECA committee, I, I do not know when sir would be doing that for sports. Uh, when I say I am talking about the ECA uh, committee as a whole, we would be putting up the schedule uh, individual registration number wise shortly, maybe by tomorrow, it should be up on the website. Uh, again, it is being mentioned here that no individual intimation will be sent for this because uh, we are getting queries here. Also asking that we have not been informed whether we are supposed to report, when we are supposed to report. You will not be informed individually. You will have to uh, report at the center as per the broad schedule that will be intimated, the range of which has already been given on the website. For NCC and NSS, the marks shall reflect on the da dashboard and the grievance will have to be filled in the given time frame. That time frame has also been mentioned there. I'll come on to that again as well. And then the allocations will be available on your dashboard as per the published schedule. The schedule will be has already been published and details will also be published shortly by the admission branch. So uh, everything will be followed as per the timelines that have been mentioned to the candidates at various points in time. Then coming on to the main points that have to be noted or the general instructions. These have all already been uploaded, but still are certain important ones I would like to bring to your notice. There have been around 11,700 ECA registrations, almost numbering up to 12,000 this year, which means that the competition is tough and we also have to manage this larger number. So expecting individual intimations is absolutely not something that can be done in the given time frames. The trials will start on the 12th of August and they go up to the 24th of August. The trial date range, as I mentioned, has already been given. So the outstation students are advised to plan their travel accordingly. I've been getting certain queries about their individual dates as well. I'll just come on to that. So the detailed date-wise and time slot-wise list of candidates shall be uploaded, as I mentioned, hopefully by tomorrow. 
And again, it is important here because last year we had been getting queries that my registration number was missing. You will not have, just imagine to upload 12,000 registration numbers and their individual date and time slot is absolutely not possible or humanly it's not feasible to do it. So it will have a range of registration numbers that from so-and-so number to so-and-so number is supposed to report on this date at this time. So it will have a range of the registration numbers. You're please supposed to see your registration number in the slot in which it falls and then report accordingly. Then now here, uh, since outstation queries have been coming a lot from the outstation students, it is important here to know that say, once you get your individual schedule, then only would you know right now also I've started get, getting that mine is from 12 to 24th, kindly schedule it on 24th, kindly schedule it on 12th. That is not possible. Let us just wait for your individual uh, date-wise slot to be uploaded. So if say you have applied under three ECA categories and your trial dates are coming as 12th, 16th and 24th, where if 16, if uh, say 16th is the trial date for say category like the creative writing, where we have only one time slot available, only one time date available, that category will not be changed under any circumstances. But when other, if it is possible to have other, say if it's a range being given, then only from within the range, the change shall be possible. So if the range only goes from 21st to 24th, then if you ask me to please schedule it on either 20th or on say 20, uh, 25th, that is not possible. It will only be, the change will only be possible from only among the uh, dates given for a particular uh, category. And it is again requested to the candidates to please see your individual schedule before putting up such requests and queries. Then once you will be sending such a mail, it is requested to clearly mention your CUET number so that we can ascertain because we have all your details uh, in your registration data, whether you actually are an outstation candidate or not. So please mention your CUET number so that we can verify that, yes, you actually need to travel to Delhi. So this uh, change should be allowed for you. And also mention all ECA categories. We get uh, mails with uh, limited information that please change this and this to that and that. That we will not entertain unless we really know that why are you warranting that change. So please mention all the details and so that the ECA admission committee can look for a possible feasible change for you. Then a mail intimating the same. If in case it is not possible, then also you will be intimated about it. If in case it is being possible and it is being shifted to another date, the same, same shall also be intimated to you. And it will also be marked to your respective nodal center. So if say it's a Ramjus College that we're talking about or say Mata Sundari College that we're talking about, the mail would also be marked to that respective ECA nodal center for the concerned person also to take note that instead of say 23rd, you are going to report on the 20th. So that no walk-in request for change of date of trials shall be entertained. So if you just think I have landed in Nelly, let me go to the uh, respective center or something has happened, let me go to the center and let me talk to them please take my trials today we are sorry we are not going to do that because the schedule day wise has been put up and a number of stakeholders are involved so please you have to first write to the ec at the rate admission uh, uh, .du .ac .in, this website uh, email address which is given here and then only once you've been intimated that the change has been made and the nodal center will also be accordingly intimated then only will this change be entertained then uh continuing with this uh, the candidates may also be telephonically informed by the officials of the ECA center that uh, the dates will not be changed, uh, but they may request you to please come at an earlier time slot or maybe at a later time slot. As you know, this is human. Uh, this is an human uh, exercise involving a number of stakeholders. Say if on a given date due to any circumstance, the lesser number of candidates have turned up or almost if 100% uh, attendance is there, then they may prepone or advance or postpone your time slot. But we will not change the date so that the outstation candidates may not worry that this is happening. And then also in case uh, it is not possible for you to report at an earlier time that has been given to you by the convener or anybody from the nodal center, then you will still be entertained at the time that was originally allocated to you. So do not panic. Do not think those calls to be fake. It's very unlikely that you will be made such a call. But in case they do come, then please act accordingly. That is why we are pre-intimating you through this webinar. Then uh, another reason why this um, date of trial may be changed, which is the second circumstance, which is only when there is a clash of date. So say if there is a there's a candidate who 
has been allocated uh, because there is a range for almost all categories except quiz and creative writing. So if in case you are also appearing for music vocal, which say falls on 22nd, your music instrumental also as per your uh, registration number falls on 22nd, then please again mention all the details the dates of all the categories that you're coming in, your CEO at registration number for us to verify that you are actually a stakeholder for different categories. And then the possible schedule change, which you can want, which is possible also as per the schedule range, which has been given to you. Again, you're supposed to mail to the same email ID and the same process shall be followed. You shall be intimated along with the nodal center being intimated. No other reason besides this clash and travel plans for the outstation candidates shall be entertained for the date change. So I have missed my uh, given trial schedule. I could not report. I could not see. I was not personally intimated. I was unwell. My instruments were not available. No such excuse will be entertained for a change of the date of the trials. Then it is also assumed because we have been getting certain queries also that uh, I am a candidate for so-and-so category, but no college has been intimated. So maybe I can change my category from Sitar to Santur or anything of that sort. No, if there is no uh, seat being offered by a given college for the ECA category that you have applied in, the candidate shall not be considered for in allocation, even if inadvertently, though we are, being, uh, we are taking all precautions that your trial should also not be taken. But as I said, it's a huge number that we are involved with. If in case you still have been allowed to give trials, you cannot stake a claim to any seat on any ECA category, which has not been offered by any college. So the ECA category wise seat matrix has also been uploaded for you to see where it is clearly mentioned, no seat offered under this category, no seat offered by any college. So please, you cannot stake claim, report for the trial only if a Seat has been, any seat has been offered by the college of your choice. Otherwise, it makes no sense to come for the trials. Then, uh, this, this is already been uploaded yesterday, as I mentioned. So, I'll very quickly take you through this gist. So, these were the main uh, points, the main pointers that I had talked about um, before I go on to that. The detail of each category-wise instructions, it's not possible to take all of those uh, 12 categories where physical trials are involved at this point here. They have all been uploaded uploaded, very clearly uploaded, where accompanists are allowed, where accompanists are not allowed, which all kind of instruments are allowed, what all kind of uh, songs, tracks, if it involves um, a dance category, what all is involved, what all is uh, what all is uh, possible. All that has been uploaded in the individual category-wise uh, instructions. You are requested to please look at it and then report for your trials accordingly. Then uh, the category-wise details that I was talking about. So for creative writing, we have Hansraj. Now here, the request for change will not be entertained. Your time-wise slot, of course, will be intimated that this and this registration to this and this or for Hindi and English, at what time slot you're supposed to report on 16th of August. And similarly, for dance debate, there's a whole range being given to you. Then for um, quiz, as you can see, test is on 20th August. We have deliberately kept creative writing and quiz on different dates. Because we do realize that the candidates may be applying in one category as creative writing as also in the quiz because they come under the literary category of AIU. So that is why they have been kept on separate days. No uh, request for change of date of these two categories will be entertained. Then the NSS and NCC grievance window shall only be open between 20th to 22nd August. The entire form will have details of how do you fill up the grievance window. Before that, on 19th or on 20th morning, hopefully by 19th uh, evening, because we've got a huge number in both NCC and NSS, the, sh the scores, all category-wise, uh, ECA criteria-wise scores will be uploaded on the University of Delhi Admission website. For this, you will not be intimated on your individual dashboard. That is at least the plan of things as of now. They will be uploaded on the University of Delhi admission website. Please check up your score because you also have your entire marking scheme before you in the CSAS document. In case you feel that you have been awarded lesser marks than what you deserve, you please put up the uh, query in the grievance window, clearly stating why you think a, a higher mark should be awarded to you. As clear as you will be in your uh, grievance address, uh, grievance, the easier it will be for the 
concerned officer to address the same. So only during this window period will the grievance redressal form be open. So any query after that, physically coming to the office that no, please, I forgot, I missed, I was out, I was not in the coverage range, my internet was not working. For three whole days, internet not working is a very unlikely situation. So please plan yourselves accordingly that from 20th to 22nd, the NCC NSS grievance window shall be open. This grievance window will not be available for any other category besides NCC and NSS because for the trial component marks, the 60 marks, the discretion of the judges is final. You anyway do not have any right to raise a grievance there. And for the certificate evaluation, you will be countersigning your marks at the trial venue itself, which was already intimated to you in the previous webinar that was held on the ECA categories. So for them, when you're anyway signing your countersigning your marks there, you cannot come back and request for a grievance window or an entertainment of the change of marks in the certificates later on. Then, as has been already mentioned in the CSA's brochure, so very quickly, I'll uh, take you through this. The CM, which is the combined ECA merit, will be based on the 25% of your CUH score and 75% of your ECA score. Uh, we have been getting queries that how will calculate hoga? our CUH score to 800 from 600 and all such queries. See, you have all learned the process of um, it is it, if somebody has been asking me, does it will you normalize? No, at University of Delhi, we do not normalize any score. We do not touch with your scores. You all have learned the unitary method in your lower uh, class maths. We only adopt that unitary method. So whatever has been marked out of uh, 800, 650, whatever, it will all be taken as the basis of 25. And the ECS score will be out of 75. So combining these two will be getting the score out of 100. Or we may adopt the opposite method. We may grade, scale up rather than scaling down. So the ECS score, which is out of 75, that may be graded up to 800. And all your CUH scores may be graded up to 800. So that will be your marks out of 1600. So whatever be the nomenclature or the methodology adopted, we will not be normalizing anything. We will only be adopting the unitary method to arrive at the uniform CEM score, which will be used to prepare your merit. So at this point, we get a number of queries. Can my friend ka ya mere acquaintance ka to mere se kam ECA score tha, lekin usko mujhse better college allocate ho gaya hai. See, it's not just about the ECA score. It also has to do about your CUH score. So if your difference of ECA score is only of one mark, but your friend or your acquaintance makes up for that in the CUH score by say two to three marks, then obviously that candidate will be placed higher up in the merit ranking than you would be placed at. So please don't discuss things or write up queries in isolation, consider the entire picture in totality before you drop any conclusion that something unfair has happened to you because every candidate starts feeling at a point of time that I have been I have been dealt with unfairly. Believe me, everything is being done in a very transparent, in a very fair manner. We are totally equitable. All candidates are equal for us. We are not, no biases are involved at any point in time here. For the NCC and the NSS, the ECA scores of only 75 marks are considered. There is no physical trial component. Same way for them also, the CM will be drawn up where again, please consider the, because last year we did have queries wherein the screenshots of the NCC and the NSS scores were sent to us saying that, look at this, the NCC score of this candidate was lower than me. Still, the college has been allocated, which was higher up in my preference ranking. Uh, how can this be? It is being done unfairly because it takes you a minute to immediately allege that it is being done unfairly. Uh, please do not write such mails. Please consider things in totality. Again, as I said, the CUH score might have been higher, might have been or must. It, it would definitely have been higher if you think that a, that a college which was higher up in your ranking has been awarded to somebody who was, say, featuring lower in the ECA score. So you are not aware of the entire situation of the candidate, the other candidate. You are not aware of their CUH scores. So please be aware of the total picture. That is how the CM ranking, uh, the merit ranking is drawn up for the ECA category as also for the sports category. Then coming on to the seat allocation, uh, as I just said, it will be 25% of your highest program specific CUH score and 75% of your highest uh, ECA score. Then additionally, the candidate must have scored at least 30 marks out of the 75 uh, in the given ECA category to be considered for the admission in the particular ECA category. Then again, the allocations will be followed in the same manner as is being done for the general admissions that your ranking 
then your preferences and then the availability of seats is what is going to determine whether you will be allocated a particular ECA seat in a particular college. And um, candidates who have not opted for ECA seats, uh, it will be only once you opt for the ECA seats, they will have to accept that seat to be considered for upgradation, if any, that the ECA category brings out with. Uh, regular procedure for upgrading and freezing shall be uh, here. Now, with all humility at my uh, command, I am borrowing, I have uh, used this slide which has been borrowed from the Dean Admissions uh, press conference presentation because the allocation process is the same and we are getting a number of queries regarding that. So I will just address that before I close my session here. So just as you do for your any other allocation, let's call that the general allocation. So same goes for the ECA category as well. If you do not accept it, uh, then it may get rejected or it may get approved. If you do not do any action, then that means you are not willing to accept the offer of the ECA seat that has been made to you. Now, in this, at this point, what it means is this point here that you will not be considered for subsequent allocations in the here. It will be for the ECA rounds. What this means is that your general ki seat jo aapko de rakhi hai, wo aapke paas rahegi if you do not accept the ECA seat that has been allocated to you. Aap log general ki upgrade and subsequent rounds mein applicable raho ge, regular rounds jo hai, lekin aap us supernumerary ECA ki allocation se bahar ho jau ge. Similarly, if you accept the ECA allocation, now look, what is the situation under which, because uh, most of the queries are coming on this aspect only. See, what is the situation under which you will be accepting the ECA allocation? Say you have given your 20 preferences. Up to the time the EC allocation is um, is announced, you would have been given your general allocation or let us assume that you have not been given. So here we are taking the case that you have been allocated something. So say in the regular rounds, you have been allocated up to your 12th preference, which means the top 11 preferences are still available for you where you have preferred them. ECA is not going to be looking at what you have been allocated in the general list. So you may get a college which is among your 1 to 11 or your 12th itself, or maybe which is lower down from the 12th. So in that case, if it is 12th or below 12th, obviously you are not going to accept that because you are anyway, you anyway have been allocated something better as we call it Pareto optimality in the situation through the general regular rounds. Now in that case, you will be out of the ECA allocation process, but you will continue to be in the regular allocation rounds. But you will be accepting, now let us come on to the case, you will be accepting the ECA allocation, which means you have been allocated a college through ECA, which is among your top 1 to 11. Now, which is what means is that you have been allocated better than what you were allocated earlier. So you have chosen that thing. Now, if you're out of the general allocations, but you've anyway been allocated better, you will be applicable for the upgrades in the ECA category. So if you choose to have an upgrade here, it will only be from among the colleges which are offering your category seat in the preference list that you have drawn up. So please carefully choose what you have to do at this stage. There should be no confusion in any candidate's mind, whether if I consider, whether I'll be considered for the regular round as well, if I choose the ECA seat, whether if I choose the ECA seat, my regular admission will be retained. No, it will not be retained. Your regular admission will be dropped. Then only will your ECA allocation be, once you have accepted it, the general allocation, you'll be out of that. So same goes for the uh, upgrade option also. Again, I have borrowed it from the Dean Admissions um, uh, presentation. I am extremely thankful to you for that, ma'am. So here again, if it has been taken as an, if you take an upgrade, then you will be upgraded in the ECA category alone. Not appearing, not, uh, uh, not taking up, accepting uh, the word as accept. The ECA allocation would not make you fall out of the general rounds that are being done by the admission branch. All allocations are independent of each other. So coming on to the common FAQs before I close my presentation. Now here, if I choose accept, this is what I have just mentioned and I'm repeating it here, that if I choose to accept my EC allocation, will I be considered for upgrade in the general or regular rounds, whatever the nomenclature that the admission branch uses? No, in that case, as I just mentioned, if you choose to accept a seat in the given supernumerary quota, you shall be considered for upgrades only in that supernumerary quota. 
second point second faq that we usually get is that i have already gotten my choice of college and program which i just explained to you through the 12th uh, preference that i talked about then what happens if i don't appear for trials for this or for any other reason for that matter then as i just said ec allocations are independent of your other allocations if you do not appear for trials you are not eligible for ec allocations but for all other allocations for all other the regular rounds and the other supernumerary quotas you may or may not have applied through you are eligible for all of that then uh, as i just mentioned i do not accept my ec allocation what will happen just that you will not be considered for further upgradations in the eca allocations you will be considered for the general rounds uh, as has just been explained and once i have taken admission as sir also just specified and emphasized for the sports category if you take admission on the basis of eca yes you are obliged to take part in the given eca activities and events for all four years of your undergrad college life four years one year two years since we are under the nep you may choose to um, uh, exit uh, multiple exit options are there so if you choose to ex exit at any point till that time you are an undergrad student of the university of, you are an undergrad student of the university of delhi you will be obliged to take part in the college and eca activities of the university as and when called upon so that was it from my side i stop my share here and 